Hey guys, Bart the Nature Guy here. This is week two for us. Uh, last week we did uh, different types of tents and different things to know about tents, kind of a tent 101. This week is all about knots and ropes a little bit. I'm um, not gonna get too much into ropes until we get into survival stuff down the road on the different kinds of rope, ropes and what they're made of and that sort of thing and how you can use those. Today's mostly about knots. Um, after you put tents up, oftentimes there's there's a lot, a lot of like strings that you need to kind of attach to, to the tent to hold it down, not just the stakes. Um, so I'm gonna kind of go through maybe six, seven uh, different knots that are just good to know in the outdoors. Not all just camping related, just kind of good good know-how. Um, it's something that a lot of the students, I taught them a lot last year, they seem to really like it, so I'm gonna share it with you as best I can uh, on video. So it's not something I've ever shown on video before, so we'll kind of go through kind of six, seven knots, things that I normally would use and real common for me. So um, we'll go through a couple of them. Um, you see this rope here, that'll be later. Don't have to worry about that one right there. Um, First one we're gonna do is just, you know, Minnesota's got lots of boats and lots of docks, and uh, and a lot of times you just need a little loop at the end and just throw it over the end of that kind of dock pole that's sticking up, or you just wanna attach something to a little little branch here, you need a loop. So all you're gonna do is take your rope, make a circle, reach your hand in, right? So, real simple knot. You can do that with shoelaces. If you wanna take a, take a quick, like, two minute break right now, hit pause on this thing, go find yourself a pair of tennis shoes, um, pull the, the shoelaces out of it to do that with me. If you wanna go find some rope maybe out of a garage or an area that you store things like that in your home or your apartment, please go do that and I'll just hit play right when you get back on and I'll do this one more time. All you're doing is grabbing the end, we'll call this oftentimes the, the long end um, that you don't see. This is called the working end. This is kind of considered the base end. So all you're gonna do is kind of fold that over, create a circle, Reach your fingers through, grab it, pull it through. Got a nice little loop. Very common thing to see um, out anywhere, really. Um, just attaching anything. Like I said, need a loop to attach to a, to a branch or anything like that. Real simple, real common, especially when you see people like hammocking right now. You might see people trying to attach it to like a little, like, um, like a little hook. Um, and that's a common thing to see. So uh, that little hook, you know, is a little S hook on the hammock and you need a little loop. Real simple, again, fold it over, make a circle, go through. Now, how they might attach to the tree in the first place is called a half inch. It's probably one of the most common knots ever used in the whole planet. And all you're doing is taking it around a base, you're going over, you can see that, and through. And you tie it, and that's called a half hitch. A lot of people know that knot, they just don't know the name of it. It's called a half hitch. And you do it a couple times and double half hitch. Real simple. You might see people triple do it up, real, you know, real simple. Great knot, real easy to use. You can kind of see those three circles. I'll try and bend that in as best I can so you can see it. Nice and even across there. Double, triple, half inch. Now, this is real good, but it does take a little while to get out. Like when you're sitting here like this and I'm trying to talk to you and do this at the same time, you gotta get that out. Um, that's not always, you, sometimes you really need to get out of there fast. Um, especially if people work around livestock or anything like that or around horses. Um, I was definitely, I was out west doing a backcountry trip. Um, on horseback, they definitely wanted me to be able to pop it and get out of there if, if something spooked the horse, because I'm kind of a new person to that horse. They didn't want me to, to get in trouble with that horse and have like myself between like a wall or a fence and then the horse itself. So this is the knot that they kind of showed me um, on how they wanted me to tie the horse up. They definitely watch because horses are thousands of dollars. You don't want thousands of dollars just to go wandering off in the middle of the mountains. So they definitely watched. They didn't let me even tie this knot for probably until like day four uh, I kept showing them I could, I was pretty good with it, and they finally were like, okay, you got it. So I'm gonna show you what, what I was using with them, which was coming around the tree, horse is back here, this is your base end, going to the horse. You bring that working end under, and it actually makes kind of like a little bit of a cross. I would take it, go over, kind of towards the tree, so you can see that there's a hole it creates there. So you went under, then over, you reach your hand through, and you pull that up. Now if you notice, I'm not pulling the end through, I'm just grabbing the line through. This is what we call creating a bite. It's like creating a, like a bunny ear in the middle of the knot. Now that slides up against the tree, right? So horse is there, all is good. They can tug on it all they want. But I also call this sometimes, if anybody had worked with me last year on knots, I oftentimes call this the saloon knot because if you ever see like a shootout in a western, they come out and what do they do? They don't undo a bunch of knots and sit there and get shot up while they're trying to get their horse undone. They do go real quick. They're pulling and they walk out to their horse, they do what? pop, boom, gone, one little pull. So this creates that one pull bite, what they call a knot work a bite. 
So you can do a one pull pop out and it's over. I'll do it again for you. So it's around the tree, create like a 90 degree, pull over, creates a hole right there in the middle. You grab the middle of that rope and pull it through. Don't pull the tag in through. Now, you have this little tag in, that's all you gotta pull, right? Now horses, you know, let's say a horse is, it doesn't like to be where it is. Horses are really smart animals. Sometimes they're like, I don't like being here. Then we're gonna try to get out of that. Now a smart horse that's seen you make this knot 50 times or 100 times or 1,000 times, because your horse will know, hey, all I gotta do is pull this thing, pop, it's out, right? So smart horses don't want them to do that. But all you do to fix that problem is this. Take it through, got your 90 degrees, go under, over and through, okay? Now, you have this little end right here, right? So it's up against the tree, everything's good. You're like, I don't want my horse to get that. All you do is take that, see that loop right here? All you do is take that tag end and put it through that loop. Now you can still grab it and go, but if that horse grabs that knot, it's gonna tighten it down. Now, you will lose that little one pop bite, but you'll definitely know your horse tried to do something. And number two, you, you still have a horse. So, it's better than not having a horse at all. Um, so all you're doing again is pulling that bite end through that loop that you create. So I'll do it one more time. Under, over, and through. And again, here's your loop, your bunny rabbit loop. All you take is that loose end, put it through that loop. So that way if that horse grabs that tag end, your tag end's still sitting there, but if they pull it, it's gonna pull that knot closed versus open it up. Now if it's out of the loop, all you do is pull it tight, pop, gone so that is what i call the saloon knot it's a very standard knot you'll see around livestock when you need to like pop and make sure your animal stays safe um you definitely don't want to get caught between like a multi hundred pound animal and like a wall or a fence if they don't like being there and you're in between like right where the rope is and the rope's only three feet and they start moving around you don't want to get caught in that so being able to pop that to lower the stress on the animal lower the stress for yourself and to let that animal kind of go where it needs to is really really important so we've gone through kind of we did made the bowline um, made the loop at the end right got that one did our double half hitch and now we're doing our trucker's hitch now this is something that you'll see on the end of um you'll see this on cars like you'll go up to like a, a canoe at the top and come back down so it's you know one bumper is on this side goes up to the middle of like a ladder or a canoe and comes down on the other side it's kind of what people have um this is a knot that people use if they don't have ratchet straps a lot of times so basically all you're doing is you're creating that loop that we made earlier right here in the middle. So it's about maybe two or three feet away from whatever you're bringing around. This could be a bumper of a car, it could be the tree like this. You're bringing it around. Now, all you're doing is taking this extra end, putting it through the loop, and now you have like a little triangle shape here, but all you're gonna do is pull against it. And it actually goes, you can pull real hard on it, and then all of a sudden, all you gotta do is take your hand, hold that all together, it actually won't move much. That pulley system kind of takes the pressure off um, what you're doing. All you do is take this loop, rope, make a loop around, and do your half hitch that we just did around this tree right here. Now, I don't know if you can hear this, but it's very taut. It's almost like a, a guitar string. I actually didn't lean on it that much. If I was tying something up, I'd lean on it even more. And it really does get very, very taut, where a lot of times if you've ever put stuff on top of cars or tried something, um, tied something up with those half hitches, right at the very end, those half hitches will kind of give like a little half inch or one inch of, of tension away and then your rope is like really wiggly this one stays really really tight and really really good to uh to use in, in this kind of system uh, when you're tying big stuff um, and you really need to put a lot of pressure on it make sure it holds in place that's the trucker's hitch so great knot i use it all the time so another knot i'm going to show you with this and actually i'll do it with this one right here this kind of red rope is something called a prusik knot a prusik knot is i'll put this down so you can see my face a little bit um, the Prusik knot is something for uh, ascension and descension a lot. You'll see um, people use it when they're in tough spots and they need to get up and out of a tree. Um, I've seen it also when people right here, you can see this little knot right here, um, or this rope kind of attached to the tree. So if people need to like hang stuff, I'll crop over here. Not good camera shots, but I apologize for showing my back to the camera. But I'm new at this, it's what I do. Um, not the camera work. So here we have our knot. Um, if people want to hang stuff like pots and pans off of this, how do they do this? They might actually take it horizontal and make like a camp kitchen. Um, and this knot will work that way as well. But it's also an ascension knot. So it's basically taking 
Usually it's a thicker rope as the base knot. The smaller rope is just a little loop, so I can almost put my hand in it so you can kind of see how big it is. It's not that big. But what's kind of cool is if you take it around this, this rope once, so you can see how it's around the rope once, pull it through, and all you're doing is doing that one more time. I'll pull the camera up close so you can see it in the end. So don't, don't worry, I'll show you in a second. So I'm gonna pull the camera in close here so you can see it. See how it has like four, four little pieces in a row right there? Now they're nice and even and flat. If they're twisted up, you gotta start over. But what's kind of cool is this, this thing will slide up and down this multicolored rope here, right? So it slides up and down. But let's say I wanna hang on this. If I put my hand in it and I lean on it, that knot doesn't go anywhere. So I'm, I'm putting a lot of weight on this actually right now. You can see my hands kind of getting all messed up looking because I'm putting so much weight in Now I stop, and now I want to slide that knot, and it just slides. So the cool thing is you can move something up and down. So if you were in a really bad spot, let's say, um, like I go skiing out west and there's like 10 feet of snow and you fall in like a little spot where there's, you know, like underneath a pine tree where they, they call them like little, little snow ravines and below the pine trees, you're stuck, you're looking up, like how am I gonna get out of here? I don't have to go very far. A lot of people have little ascension kits like this, be able to put it up over a branch. Once they get there, they can tie that off and then they can take this little knot, slide it up and then lock themselves in and they can kind of get a whole little system here. And when we get into uh, more survival stuff in the springtime, maybe what I'll do is I'll show you what that looks like. Right now I'm just trying to teach into the knot. So um, that's the Prusik knot. I got one more knot to show you guys. This knot is called the fisherman's knot. So I will show you one last knot for the day. So we did the loop, we did the half hitches, we did the uh, trucker's hitch, we did the Prusik knot. The last one I'm gonna show you is something called a fisherman's knot. And it's a way to put two ropes together and still hold a lot of the um, pressure of the ropes in a nice way that doesn't break them apart. Because what happens with a lot of people, let's say, um, this will, I'll use a car analogy. Car goes in a ditch, buddy calls his friend up, says, hey man, I went in the ditch, I need some rope. I got some rope, but you probably need to bring some extra. So they both have to put the ropes together to get the car out, right? And all they do is grab the two ropes, they make one of those loops, they grab it through, boom, they tie the ropes together. What happens though with this kind of knot, if you can see those strings go into that hole. And so when the pressure of those two cars pulls, it wants to break the knot apart. And so you actually lose strength of the rope because this knot actually is trying to tear the ropes apart. This is a knot, the fisherman's knot, has two knots that you create, and then as the cars pull together, that weight, the thousands of pounds of pressure, they'll actually come together. Now, your rope has to be able to handle that kind of pressure, but if they are, the kind of knot will support that kind of, of work um, being done. So I'll show you how to do it. it. Takes two different ropes. I'm using two different colors so you can kind of see. Take one in one hand, one in the other. So you got like this, and then you cross them over. You see that? I, so it's about 18 inches. So if you imagine a picnic table, I'm right here. I'm gonna karate chop in half. That's the easiest way I can explain it. And I'm gonna take this lighter string, bring it over half. So one string is straight, the black string is straight. There's a loop on the, just a bend right here. You're gonna hold it right there. You're gonna take this string around everything and then pull it through that loop that was at the beginning. All right, it's a nice little knot. So, now I'll do the same thing on the other end so you can kind of see what that knot looks like. Real simple, I'm using kind of a simple style right now. Here we go, karate chop in the middle. You have that black string now. So this string, if you notice, it's really just a knot with the black string inside. The black string is just slipping through, no big deal. Now all you're gonna do is the same knot on the other side. So you're gonna karate chop, Bring that other string over. So now you have a kind of a bend in one. You're gonna pinch it together. Take this black rope around three times. Put it through that loop right there. You can see that. And creates another knot. Now I'll show you. Once you get these all tied in, you have these two knots. Now when these two cars pull, one pulls this way, one pulls that way. Now the knots come together. And they're perfectly in line and the pressure of the cars now pulls those knots, those two different knots together versus that one knot trying to break itself apart. So a really good knot. This is also really adjustable. And if anybody has ever bought one, been on like a trip and you buy like a little bracelet, it's a little braided, braided bracelet and there's two little knots and you can adjust your bracelet or your necklace, 
this is the knot. It's the same thing. This is just a big version of it. So you can imagine having a necklace around and you need to adjust it. That's how you do it. So it stays wherever you want it to stay. So that's the fisherman's knot. So um, excellent work today, guys. I hope to see you all soon in person at some point throughout the year. Um, miss you all. I hope everybody's in good health. And uh, this is Bart the Nature Guy. Knots. Peace out. See you later. <laughs> it's all good. Have a good week, everybody. Bye-bye.